Hey everyone, my name is Nick Shalom, the former Air Force and Space Force Chief Software Officer. I'm also the founder of Assage. Today we're going to look at how we were able to augment the velocity of software developers by 35 to 42x. That's right, you heard me right. On average, we find that developers are increasing their velocity using Assage and turn into 35 people. We've done videos in the past showing how to use Assage in software development. So take a look at those as well. Today, we're going to look at how we were able to drastically automate the generation of code for our backlogs. And effectively, what you're going to see is how we use Assage to take our user stories and generate about 90% of the code of Assage every day, multiple times a day. And that enables us to release five times a day with a very small team. All right, so the first thing here is uh, we're going to show you our backlog. Uh, we use GitHub for that, but again, you could use uh, any uh, tool that's uh, managing your user stories and Kanban board here. For example, we're going to take a look at some of the uh, user stories we have in progress. And so if you look at uh, this one, you know, we have a, a super admin feature for our dedicated tenant and multi tenant. So we can uh, validate emails, for example, that are not receiving uh, the automated code uh, when they sign up uh, on Assage. And so we can manually force that. And uh, so that was a user story we had created. That's going to impact both the chat service to recognize the command and also the user service to force that email activation. And so we're giving a couple of examples of existing code that we use to reset, for example, user passwords. So that's going to be helpful uh, for the bot to be tracking that. And so all we're doing is giving a little bit of insight. Uh, but again, the bot has access to our code base as well. So it knows kind of all the services. But again, we have 20 microservices now in our Kubernetes driven containerized architecture. So it's just often better to uh, give a little bit of insight. It takes us about, you know, five minutes to uh, do that uh, in the description of the user story here. And that's going to enable us to use the bot now to generate uh, those stories and so we're going to show you how we've done that we have automated the process but i'm going to show you behind the scene and the code we had to create to go pull these user stories uh, from github and then use our assage api to create uh, the code and store it into our chats we could have also pushed the code inside of uh, a merge request in github but we just prefer uh, to create different tabs in our chat for each of these user story just easier uh, for us to then take a look and go tweak it and make it perfect before we then push that to the github uh, repository so that's the way we do it you can do it the way you prefer but we're just going to show you how we do it and how on average uh, we increase the velocity of a developer here to 42x all right, so we have this user story here. Uh, we have to tag it. And so uh, when it's uh, ready for coding, we put the RC here to yes. That's uh, a tag we created specifically uh, for that feature. So now that it's tagged and saved, the bot is going to be able to generate the code. All right, so this is a very simple code that we automated and put into a cron job in Kubernetes. But again, this is just to show you we're going to be open sourcing that code as well. So you can take a look at it. Uh, here is uh, simply a few things. One is the project ID of uh, the GitHub uh, project. Uh, and uh, here is the prompt that we use. We are just effectively uh, telling the, the bot to uh, behave as a software developer and uh, be cautious about security and all these good stuff. And so you can, of course, customize uh, that prompt here. And then we're going to have uh, what is here the uh, pool of the uh, GitHub project items. Uh, we use a GitHub token to, to do that in a, in an environment variable. And then, you know, what it's going to do is use the graph uh, QL uh, API of uh, GitHub to pull all the projects. And so once we have the projects, all we do is effectively uh, pull it into a, a set of uh, uh, an array with a dictionary with a title and the, the, the content of that uh, user story. And then uh, simply all we're doing with that is um, going into uh, this API call uh, using Assage uh, Python client to uh, call the, um, the API to generate the code response and uh, using the system prompt that you, you've seen above. And then we convert it to code because Assage are very specific uh, templating 
uh, format to display on the UI. You wouldn't have to do that if you were to uh, push it to uh, maybe a, a merge request or pull request. But if you want to display it back into SH, we have to convert it. And so we, we do that. And then uh, after that's done, what we do is appending it to the chat. And so this is going to create a new tab on your chat for that user uh, that you're using the API key from. And uh, that's going to create uh, uh, the, the title will be the title of the user story and the response of the chat with both the, the question and the response will be added to your chat. And so let's run uh, this code and uh, see what happens. So of course I set my uh, GitHub uh, key and my API client and secret key. Uh, the system just effectively uh, went through all the user story and uh, pulled the super admin full 30 day email uh, feature requests that we have. Uh, and so now what this is doing is, is calling the GPT-4 API because we use GPT-4 for that. Sometimes we do GPT-4-32K if the context window has to be uh, big. Uh, and then uh, in this case, uh, as you can see on the, the client call, uh, we only use GPT-4. And uh, what this is going to do now is generate the response. So now we're waiting uh, for the response from the API. So we got that response. So now if I go into my chat and I refresh my, uh, my page, uh, it's going to load my, my chats. And uh, you will see here we have a new uh, button here. Uh, with the title of the user story and the description. And he gave me uh, all the code uh, ready to go. So he created this uh, false validate uh, email uh, function that will be forced. Now he made a, a mistake here. And it, you know, all our super admin commands start with the, the word super admin. It did, then didn't use the super admin uh, prefix. So uh, what you could do here now, and that's what I would do if I were to do this feature, I would say, um, you uh, forgot to call the commands uh, super admin dash uh, false body date email um, fix your code they should always use the super admin admin prefix and i'm going to use gpt4 i'm going to put data set to none and now we're going to run that. And, and now the beauty is the bot is going to be able to fix its own mistake and give us the final code. And looking at it, uh, it seems that it's uh, perfect. It knows our uh, table uh, structure and it did a good job at uh, checking the email and uh, selecting it from the database and setting email verified to true. Um, so this is uh, absolutely correct. It's also checking uh, here if it's a super admin user asking and not just a regular user. Uh, and so that's also what we would have to do. Uh, and now we just got that update. And yes, it did add the super admin um, tag everywhere. Uh, so that's um, done correctly and updated. And so that code will be now good. And so what I would do is copy and paste into the services. We could do a merge request uh, then from uh, the IDE. So again, just to show you how we can take, you know, user stories coming from customers and prospects and then go ourselves and uh, augment the information there to make sure that uh, the bot is going to be able to do that work. And we'd like to do, you know, very small, well-defined features with a dedicated user story per feature uh, and not bloated uh, stuff. And then, you know, use this uh, cron job to create the chats. And then I would have these chats appearing on my on my um, assage UI to then go and know that I have to validate that. And often uh, it's either 100% right or 90%, you know, uh, often way more than, than 85. And then the human will finish the work, uh, put a set of eyes on it to make sure it's uh, valid and correct and then push it to our CI CD pipeline so it can be tested and all that, all that good stuff. So again, this is to show you how we take that automation uh, next level engagement with generative AI to augment your uh, team's velocity. It's a game changer, right? Uh, we, you've seen our other plugins on how to scan your GitHub repo, automate your commenting of code, automate the review of code for performance, uh, for cybersecurity uh, scanning uh, and detection of, of malicious code. So, so really, sky is the limit when you understand how to use this. And with our API, you can automate this task and create plugins to really 
automate days of work. So hopefully that was helpful to you. If you have any questions, uh, reach out to us on Discord. Here's the link. And if you also want, you can send us an email at sales at Thanks for watching.